Now let's take a look at binary serialization. Thus far, we've been sending messages back and forth using strings and JSON, but that really doesn't enforce a contract between the communicating parties. You could, as a programmer, go in, arbitrarily change a variable name in JSON or restructure JSON, and parsing that on the client side then becomes very sort of ad hoc. And you have to sort of plan things out and how uh, plan for failures and how variable names change. And it's just a very dirty way of doing things. But what binary serialization allows you to do is just send blobs of ones and zeros while at the same time enforcing a contract on the two communicating parties. Um, not only is it more efficient, but it promotes correctness. So you'll have uh, a tool a compiler, uh, like a protobuf compiler or um, a bond compiler or a flat buffers compiler, and you will generate a set of C++ or Python or Java or .NET uh, code. Okay, so the compiler will generate code. You will import that code on both sides of your applications. So the sending side and the receiving side of your applications agree on this contract on how one side is going to be sending the messages and how the other side is going to be receiving the messages. And I, I think that performance is a secondary benefit and the primary benefit is correctness. You want your programs to be correct before you worry about your programs being fast. And in this case, you get both. You get reliability and you get a, an order of magnitude speed up performance over JSON. And there are a ton of these li libraries out there, uh, Bond, Protobuf, Flat Buffers, there are a million others. And right now we're gonna take a look at Protobuf and in the next section, we're gonna take a look at Bond. So if you've used VC package to install Protobuf, it should be in your VC package folder Under installed, you'll have different bit versions and depending on your bit version, go into that directory. In the tools folder, you'll have protobuf there and you'll have a bunch of DLLs and an exe and just simply copy the folder and place it alongside the current examples and actual applications you can have this be a part of your build step where you generate uh, or you run the protobuf compiler before building the application and we'll take an example from the documentation. It's simply a struct consisting of a string and two integers. Open up a new command prompt and run the protobuf compiler. We'll tell it proto c cpp out and give it the file name. Then you'll see a bunch of header and source files. Copy them and paste them in both projects. In the sending side and also in the receiving side. import them in Visual Studio.
So we have a search result struct, three items in it. We get the number of bytes. Create a Z buffer. And we serialize directly into the ZMQ buffer. So there's no need to generate an intermediate string. Let's write in a tiny speed bump there. receive the ZMQ message on the pull side and formulate the proto message directly from the Z buffer. There's no intermediate string being formed here either. And that is protobuf, really no big mystery to it. It's uh, preferable to JSON uh, and definitely preferable to sending uh, strings back and forth. So next we are going to look at Microsoft Bond.